Good morning. It is 10 o'clock and we are Tuesday, so it's uh, our second edition of Science at 10. Today we have uh, Dede Hoadi. Uh, Dede is a uh, Forda seconded scientist in C4 and he's going to talk about value chain and how to improve the value chain related to timber in Indonesia in how many? Seven districts? Five. Five districts. Yeah. And this is an ongoing research, and I'm sure that Dede will be interested by any suggestion you can make to him. So, please. Thank you, Robins. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's, uh, I'm honored to be here and, and to give some talks to you. Uh, I'm going to deliver some of the key findings of uh, the ongoing, or uh, nearly complete uh, research project, actually, funded by ACR. It's about the community-based commercial forestry. And when I mean with the community-based commercial forestry, is uh, in, in practice, is the smallholders plantation, smallholders timber plantations, and mainly in the private uh, lands. Although this project actually cover uh, all other uh, community forestry schemes, like uh, hutan kemasyarakatan in Indonesian terminology, hutan tanaman raya, but since they are not currently produce timber commercially, so most of the data that I'm going to present now is based on the private-owned smallholders plantations. And uh, this project is, uh, will be completed by the end of this year, and there are some activities. Uh, but I would like to focus on the value chains uh, on this aspect. And first, I think I need to read this, what, what I mean with the value chains is uh, I, uh, we use the terminology that's developed by DFID. It's uh, a complex range of activities carried out by various actors. So it includes the timber growers, middlemen, processors, to produce raw materials, logs, and to transform these to a final product that is sold to consumer. So <clears throat> uh, my research mainly focus on the smallholders, so the timber growers, and then to middlemen and to processors. Of course, we, if you are looking, uh, if you are uh, trying to understand about the value chain, it could be unlimited up to the exporter. But I'm focused on the smallholders because what we are going to do is how uh, can we improve the constraints that currently still faced by smallholders. If you are look at in Indonesian situations, there are lots of smallholder plantations, but uh, they are still have uh, serious problems. So they are not, not really moved towards the commercial plantation due to various problems because of limited uh, market information, because of uh, weak bargaining positions uh, of farmers when they are dealing in timber uh, marketing transactions. So we did the research in five districts in Indonesia, two in Java, in Gunung Kidul, in Pati. Uh, we are dealing with uh, ticks, the available timber species, slow growth. And the other one is Sengon, or Paraserianthus falcataria. It's in Pati, it's a fast-growing species. And uh, in outside Java, we uh, collected data from Sumbawa in West Nusa Tenggara, and also in two, in two districts in Sulawesi, one in South Sulawesi and one in Konawe Selatan in Southeast Sulawesi. So when we are uh, studying the value chains, we are studying about the actors who are the, the market players on the value chains and what are their sellings, uh, what is the price, the volumes, and wh what is the relationship between the small holders, the timber growers, and the middlemen, and also with the uh, processors like sawmills, uh, either in the village level and the uh, district level. We did the data collection with uh, partners from various institutions, from University of Gajah Mada and Forda in, in Makassar and also in Bogor. Uh, and also from uh, Australian National University. So I, with my colleagues from NU, lead the project. We set together the questionnaires, the methodology, and then uh, our partners did the data collections. I myself also visited some of the places, and then we convened a, a workshop to verify and validate the result. So this is some of the key findings from our study. First, if, if, look the, if you look the timber market, smallholder timber market in the regions. Uh, there are various uh, price yeah, according to quality. 
for example, for tick, we can have uh, the price starting from about 500,000 per cubic up to 5 million per cubic. So it's very huge variations. And this is due to quality, which is mainly based on the diameter, the size, and also the timber quality. Uh, similarly, in Sengon, in, in Tarasiria and Tuspakateria, the price start from 400,000 per cubic up to more than 1 million. So actually, there are the potential for small, uh, smallholders to get the better price if they could do that. But uh, if you are looking the current situations, most of farmers, the, the selling price is tend toward the lower price. For example, teak in the five regions, the range between 800 to 850,000 per cubic. And why? Because first, because the timber quality is usually low, the uh, diameter is usually uh, small, and they have a lot of defects. Yeah. That's uh, in, in terms of the quality. And second, in most situations, farmers sell timber not in the form of logs, but they sell trees. So it means that also they have some limitation on uh, estimating the, the, fa uh, the volume of the trees. So they, they are much rely on the middleman to measure the trees. And the third, uh, because the, the way the farmers now uh, in their business they're selling timber when they need urgent forecast. So that was in Indonesian terminology, we call that the difficult system for smallholders is tebang butuh. Tebang butuh, it means they cut the trees where they need money. Or maybe you, you can say slash forecast. And that's weakening the bargaining positions of farmers. Because in practice, when, when farmers want to sell the timber, they don't really care about the price, they don't really care about the quality but they really care about the money that they will need and then they're counting which timber they are going to sell to the middleman. So that's the situation. Uh, what the uh, consequences? Now we, if we are looking the, the timber business in smallholders, they plan uh, in, in Java, for, uh, for example, actually the, the, the area is uh, expanding, the timber growth is expanding. It means that the benefit is there for the smallholders. But at actually, they can do better. They can get more profit if they have more little bit about the market orientations. So this is the, the, the point that we would like to, to rise to the farmers. Because we want farmers to invest more in timber plantation. There are a lot of uh, land to be planted, and there are a lot of opportunity of market. We are also uh, studying the market structure. In, if we compare in Java in, in outside Java, there's very big uh, difference. In Java, most more or less the, the, the market is established, so they, we can see, we can find a lot of buyers, middlemen at the village level. But in Sumbawa, for example, maybe we can only have two or one middlemen in a village. So also let's reduce the, the option for, for smallholders to sell their, their timbers. So that's why. Uh, market is more competitive in, in Java compared to outside Java. Uh, maybe that's also why, even though the government of Indonesia already introduced various schemes on timber plantation, like HTR, the government set aside 5 million hectares for HTR, but there's almost very limited area really planted by smallholders. One of our case study in Konoe Selawan, for example, in 2009, the community granted about 4,000 hectares of HTR. That's for plantations, for productions. But up to now, maybe only 25 hectares already planted. And that also due to assistance from NGOs, not really started by the, the smallholders. So I think there is something there that the timber business is not really, okay, not really uh, in, interested by the farmers. And there are also uh, some regulation that may hindrance the uh, smallholders uh, due to timber transaction costs, uh, timber transfer documents, because they have to provide that. Although it is uh, uh, government not, not really taking money from that, but the, the requisite for showing the timber transfer document uh, rise the transaction cost for farmers. So I think uh, the conclusion that we, we could find, uh, we, we can uh, address here. Uh, we can help actually smallholders to improve the benefit uh, from timber plantation business. From the current situation, if we can convince farmers to improve the management in timber uh, plantation. For example, 
Uh, they can do thinning, for example. They can do pruning because there are a lot of timber. Uh, actually, uh, the time for uh, for prune, but they are not not really care about pruning uh, because they they don't really think that market will respond positively to to the efforts. So uh, this is what we are trying in the project. We are trying to convince smallholders, bringing them to to sawmills directly, and to show this is the price differences, this is the quality differences, and you can do this. You can produce clear timber, bigger size uh, diameter uh, timber if you can do thinnings, pruning, etc. So we also introduced this very small and practice tools. This is the tape. With this, we can measure diameter, height, and we can also determine the basal area. Different, little bit different with the uh, method that usually used by academicians. But from these tools, we can uh, uh, teach farmers. They can select which timber they are going to uh, to maintain for, for bigger size, and then from that point, they can start uh, the, determine the basal area, and then can decide which timber that should be thin. And I think it's, it's very practical tools, and that's maybe the one of the recommendations to the extension agency in Indonesia, if you can convince farmers by, by uh, bringing them to market and also teach them how to improve their timber management. Thanks. Thank that's you. That's the main message.